Are y'all ready for your new season? Well, let's turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 as we begin this. God is so good. Are y'all enjoying church today? I love it every time I come to church. I never get tired of church. I even often watch it from my iPad at home, which I did. Anybody have, uh, ever watch online, anything online from, from the ministry? Wonderful. Well, God has so many great things in, and I believe this is our new season. Amen. So exciting. You know, we all know about what seasons, right? What season is it right now? F- football season. <laughs> Football, I'm not even a fan, and I know, I'm not saying I'm not a fan, but I'm not a watcher. I regularly don't watch it. I don't really know a lot about football, but I know it's football season. The reason I don't know a whole lot about it is because I was in the band, and I never could pay attention to what was going on in the field because we're always playing the fight song. I, every time they would put the finger out to play the fight song, I always figured something good must have been happening, or maybe they wanted something good to happen. But also fall, we're all ready for it to get cool, right? I mean, they had a little glimpse of it yesterday, but where did it go? Where's my cool? I want to be in that cool season. And, and, but there's so many different seasons in life. You know, we talk about the holiday season's about to come up. And of course, we all know in, in South Louisiana about crawfish season. Yes. <laughs> but everything has to have that, seems to have that tag season to it. So season is something we all are familiar with. We, we all have different seasons of our lives. Sometimes we're do, going in one direction, all of a sudden we sense that there's a change of season, and we, and we move towards it and follow obedient to what God is calling us to do. But that's what this chapter really talks about. We're going to read Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It's in the Old Testament. Beginning in verse 1, we're going to read all the way to verse 11 together. You may be able to follow along. I don't know if they have it on the screens or not. I know they're working on those things. And I'll be reading it in the King James. It says, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So think about that. To everything, there's a season. So I don't know what season you may be in in your life. Sometimes, you know, people are in a season where they have a lot of children. Sometimes there's the empty nest season or the kids have gone off because the kids have gone off to college. But there may be a, you may be going through a new season in your life or maybe you're about to change seasons. But this is what we're going to look at today. It says to everything, under verse one again, to everything, There is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. Verse 11, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from beginning to the end. So everything in life has a time and the key is finding out what's God's timing. And what is God moving it? Because all of us experience different things in life, but it's so important to be hearing from God and knowing where he's leading us and what's our purpose and what's his purpose in our lives. Amen? Verse, the Amplified Bible says this translation of verse 11, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. So powerful, he says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He also has planted eternity in men's hearts and minds, a divinely implanted sense of purpose working through the ages, which nothing under the sun but God can alone, can satisf- God alone can satisfy, yet so that men cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. So God has planted eternity in our hearts, and what that means, he's implanted a sense of purpose, and he has something that he wants to do, He's got something in our hearts that he wants to do, and only he can satisfy us 
We can go about trying lots of different things in life, but if God's not in it, it's not going to be a happy day. I don't care how wonderful and peaceful things may look, but if God is not in it, it's an empty day. Amen? So God has planted eternity in our hearts so that we would know that and have a sense of purpose, that we're just not here just for a moment and then we disappear. We're like a vapor. No, God has planted us strategically right here on the earth with a purpose. You have a purpose in your individual lives. This church has a purpose corporately as a body, something that God wants to see fulfilled in the earth. And it's our assignment to hear from heaven and step into that purpose, to step into our yes, to step into this part of eternity that God has designated this church to be in. Amen? There's a great call going out from heaven right now. I don't know if you hear it, but there's a great call going out from heaven, and I can hear the Spirit of the Lord crying out for the souls of men. And this church is strategically placed in a position to amplify that call, to declare what God is saying, amen? The the, the same words that Jesus declared when he walked the earth, when he said, come unto me all that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Anybody interested in that kind of a call? Difficulties happen in life, but Jesus said this. He says, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but don't you love that word? (laughs) It's the connecting part of that verse where it says, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Jesus came and gave a message of joy to the world. He says, I came that you might have life, and have it more abundantly. Amplified says, to the full, till it overflows. This is the kind of message the world really needs to hear, that our God is a good God, a faithful God that keeps covenant down to a thousand generations. Woo, it's a new season. It's his season. Woo, glory to God. Glory to God. I really just have three points, but they're going to stretch out over weeks, maybe a month or so. But God is calling us to prepare. He's calling us to plant, and he's calling us to produce. He's calling us to prepare. What are you doing to prepare for the harvest? What are we doing as a church to prepare for the harvest that God wants to bring in? I spoke with Pastor uh, uh, Reverend Chris Weaver recently. He speaks regularly in the prisons in, Saint, in Jefferson Parish. And he was telling me about the different opportunities that he has when he goes in and he teaches uh, twice a week many times. And I'm talking with him about what can we do to expand that. Because God has a whole multitude of people in the prisons that need to have this message of hope proclaimed to them. They've made bad choices. Maybe some of them are there unjustly, which also happens. But they need voices and people going in there with the message of hope to bring liberty to those that are in captivity. Amen? That's our call. What did Jesus say? He says, if you've done it to the least of these, you've done it unto me. Our commission is to go into the highways and the byways and bring the glorious gospel to those that need to hear the good news about Jesus. Are you here today? Are you listening to what I'm saying? It's the call of God is being issued. He's commissioning people to step in to where into their yes. Step into your God is calling you. Don't think about how you look or maybe your experience, but think about what God has called you to do. It's our time to be prepared, to be prepared to step into what God has called us to do. Turn to Isaiah chapter 50. Everyone is ready for a change of season. I can just sense, they're just looking for that first cool front to come in. Our landscapers have, our staff has connected with a landscaping company and they put brand new little baby flowers in. Did you see them when you drove up? We're getting ready for the cool season because those old flowers that were there before can't take the cool. They can take the heat, but they can't take the cool. So there's, there's, there's something even going on in the agricultural world that the seasons have to be recognized. And so they brought in these little tiny baby plants that they promised me are going to grow up and be full and luscious in another month or so. But it's so beautiful to see this happening. But we know that the heat that's, that what was had to go away, but the, 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 they, the plants that were could not take the cool. 
So this new season, we have to have some adjustments that happen. We have to recognize what God's doing and get in alignment to what he is saying. Amen? Amen. God has some great plans. And he's trying to show us and give us wisdom and understanding to know how to speak and what to do. The words that God gave me back in June through Jesse when he was talking about the vision of the church and what's going on, he says, I'm going to give you the right things to say. Amen. You're going to know the right things to say. So I'm trusting and believing that. Because he's a good God, a faithful God, right? Amen. Keeps covenant. He does what he says. In Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4, says this. And 5, we'll read it. This is the King James as well. It says, The Lord hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth me morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. The Lord hath opened in my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. So God is revealing. Him. Now this we know was really a prophetic scripture for the Messiah, that he was given the tongue of the learned, and he knew exactly what to say. The Bible often talks about how Jesus only said what the Father said. He only did what the Father did. And I just love this verse when I kind of saw it in a new light, even just today, how he wakeneth me morning by morning. Every morning, God has a new plan, a new way of speaking to us, a new way of fresh revelation. I don't have to stack up and think about everything that's going to happen next week or next year, but just morning by morning what he's saying to do. Amen? And, and that's what he did with Jesus because Jesus spent time with the Father and he knew exactly what to do when, and where to go. And God is, gonna, is doing that with us too for this church. He's, gonna reveal, he's revealing his plan to know exactly what to do for us individually you're gonna, and also as a church family. So expect to be awakened morning by morning with God speaking to you giving you wisdom and insight into the details of your own life, the plans that he has for you, the Bible says, are for good and for not calamity, not for calamity, to give you a future and, an, and a hope. He knows that plan. And the and Bible talks about how his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are higher than our thoughts, but he wants to get those high ways and those high thoughts into us. And the way he does that is through his spirit. He communicates through his spirit and he speaks to us spirit to spirit so that we can know the steps to take. Amen? It won't be often an audible voice, but it'll be a knowing in your spirit. and You'll know which way to go, this way or that way. Amen? Amen. So expect to be awakened morning by morning. Expect your ears to be awakened to hear. Sometimes we've got junk in our ears. We've got garbage in your ears, and it's hindering your hearing. It, it's clouding your, your way of, of, of listening because that too many other voices are listening in. we got to tune in to what the Spirit is saying because it's like a radio wave. It's going out there and looking for a receiver. God's Word's out there looking for a receiver. And when it goes out there, we have to be, have our ears open and cleaned out so that we can hear precisely and, and uh, clearly and respond. So we need to have, expect to be awakened morning by morning. We need to expect to have our ears to be awakened to hear. It's a faith concept. Expect to hear and expect to learn because he says that I have my, wake my ear to hear as the learned, which one that is taught of the Lord. So God is teaching. And the way that he teaches is through his word. So if you're never taking time to open your Bible throughout the week, if you're only here seeing those few scriptures that may be referred to on a Sunday morning, or, and you're not really going into much detailed personal study, you're going to hear less. Your, your ear is not going to be as fine-tuned to what's God, what God is saying. He expects us to, be, to study his word. He says, study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So as a believer, we have a responsibility to study and to find out what God's word has said. And when you sit down in the morning to pray or kneel, however it is you pray, then you, you could also make sure you spend time in the word of God, not just reading quantities of chapters and verse, 
but making sure that you're reading and focusing in on what God is saying. And he will open up his word to you. If you ask him, he will show you. He will give you the tongue of the learned so that you would know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. So that's the purpose. He's giving you this information so that you can be an effective a believer, effective witnesser, an effective minister, and all of us are called to minister the word of God to one person or another. But God has called us to stand in the gap for the world. And so when we have a word in season for them that are weary, that's what Jesus did. And that's what he wants to do for each one of us, Okay, right? So we can expect to be used by God to speak a word in season to those that are weary. So we need to be recognized, and God is spent, you wanting us to spend time preparing. And so preparation time is so important. What did Jesus, he had 30 years of preparation and three years of implementation when he was on the earth. So all of us need to be spending a little more time preparing, spending time before God and letting him show us things that we need to know and correction. So I'm spending t a lot of time preparing, looking through uh, the various outreaches of the ministry, the, of the church, seeing what we've been doing. And, and you know, does it, to me, it, everything is a great thing that we may be doing, but it has to be the God thing. We, we can, there's so many good things that can be go, going on, but you can be so packed in that you're not focusing it or as effective. So we need to hear from heaven and know just exactly what needs to be done. So I'm praying that y'all are praying with me. And it's not just a church is not spectator sport. No, no, no. <laughs> we are, we are a, a participation. This is a course, a, a, a something where we participate together. Amen. We're called to work together for God to reach the world. Amen. Amen. So we're going to spend time preparing, and the way we do that is we, I spend time in prayer, you're spending time in prayer, and I believe that we're going to have the ear of the learned so we'll know how to speak a word in season, and not just with our voice, but with our action, amen, amen. and do what God has called us to do. So we're in our preparation time, and when we do that, we're searching our heart, we're examining we're eliminating and we're enforcing things in our lives. So we're going to go into more detail about that on another season, but it's already 11.30. And uh, God has, has, uh, is calling us to this new season with a new purpose. Yes. Amen. Amen. Anybody sense this is, is the truth? I'm not, I know I'm not the only one. But I'm saying, you know, sometimes when something is new, it's scary. You know, the, the flesh likes to, to rest back on the comfortable the, the flesh likes to st sit back and just do what's easy. Oh, I, what you've already done. And, and do the same old, same old, same old. But God is calling us to step into the new. Stepping into the new is not always easy. Anybody ever bought a brand new pair of shoes? I'm sure you have at least. Everybody here can sit, raise their hand to that. At least. And sometimes you have to break those babies in. Sometimes they're beautiful and sometimes they're just beautiful, but they're not comfortable. And that's okay, too, sometimes. <laughs> that's a different season. Anyway, <laughs> but anytime you do something new, there's going to be a learning curve. There's going to be some adaptation that has to happen. There's going to be some, you, when you step out of the, the natural way, of the old way of doing things, the new thing doesn't always, uh, you, you don't have to, you can't go by your feelings. This new way is, is going to be different. Hi, I'm Kathy Duplantis. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with all things Jesse Duplantis Ministries. God bless. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.